Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I pray you're all well. Okay, let's review al Fatiha. Bismillahir Rahim, alhamdulillah. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen wa sallallahu wa sallama wa baraka ala Sayyidina wa maulana Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in Allahumma allimna ma yanfa'una wa anfa'na bima allamtana wa amnahna ya rabbana ilman wa amalan wa qurban ya arhamar rahimin Allahumma akrimna wa la tahinna wa a'tina wa la tahrimna wa athirna wa la tu'thir alayna wa ardina wa ardu'anna Ya Kareem <coughs> Okay, so Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. We last looked at this point where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Lahu mafatih al-ghayb. Wa'indahu mafatih al-ghayb. That he has the keys to the unseen. He knows the absolute unseen. For, for the rest of humanity, the things, the, <coughs> excuse me, the important things of the unseen uh, can be known one of two ways. Um, either via a messenger or if someone is a messenger Allah shows them that so this is through knowledge or experience which is at death so when death occurs you know people are shown their place in in the akhirah <coughs> they see the angel of death they see you know the uh, their place in paradise or hell or so these things are seen uh, so in order to get this point across then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, gives us now proof of his ability to create us once again and also saying that you know we will be resurrected and we will have to stand before him so <coughs> with the next verse so he says ليقضى أجل أجل مسمى ثم إليه مرجعكم ثم ينبئكم بما كنتم تعملون. Okay, so he said he is the one, no one else. Right, Allah alone is the one. He is the one who calls you back, calls back your souls by night, and knows what you do by day, and then revives you daily to complete your appointed term. <coughs> to him is your ultimate return. Then he will inform you of what you used to do. Okay. <coughs> we'll have to excuse this cough. Um, <coughs> so he says, وَهُوَ الَّذِي يَتَوَفَّاكُمْ He is the one who takes you back. And so, tawaffi, or uh, this tawaffa, um, <coughs> the word is you. So what it means is to take back what's yours, your right, fully. You lend someone 100 pounds, you don't take 99 pounds back. That's not tawaffi. It's to take uh, the full 100 back. So tawafi, so it's taking back what's yours fully. So this expression, like um, in Surah Al Ghafir, is used Allahu yatawafa al anfusahina mautiha. Allah reclaims uh, souls when they die and those that don't die when they sleep. So <clears throat> this reclam reclamation of a soul <coughs> can happen. <clears throat> There's the minor reclamation, which is sleep. A person, when they're asleep, they lose consciousness and the soul ascends and you know that's how, that's how sometimes people you know uh, um can perceive things of the future you know, in a in a broad way in their dreams and these sorts of things and sometimes it's other things in you know, your brain processing the events of the day these sorts of things um so <clears throat> that's the minor reclamation right minor wafa and the major one is death right so he says he alone he is the one who does this he might have appointed angels to come and take your souls but in reality everything is done by god he creates you he feeds you he gives you all your blessings and the uh, you know the soul is actually taken by him subhanahu wa ta'ala well, and he he's known for it right it's known if you understand this you'll realize fully what did you do yatawafakum takes you back fully, takes back your souls fully belayl in the night <clears throat> and generally uh, this is how it happens people sleep for the most part people sleep at night and they're awake in the day <coughs> so the verse has 
mentioned it in this order. Um, <clears throat> but there are people and there are times where people sleep at night and, you know, uh, sleep at in, the, in the day and they're awake at night. And so that the, the wafi would happen at them for them, for these people at, at those times whenever they're asleep. Uh, so it's as though <clears throat> he's taken our souls. It's it's reminiscent to death. Uh, so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he could take our souls permanently any night. You could die anytime you sleep, you sleep, right? Or anytime in the day. But because sleep resembles death in this regard, is is mentioned here. And he knows what you have earned, what you do day by day. So they explain this word, jarahtum, uh, as earned in some of the uh, tafasir, but it's referring to what people do. What's interesting is the word jaraha jurh, it's a wound. Um, so it's, 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 let's say, damage that's caused to something by exerting pressure or force that. Uh, that is not in it is not suited to its natural way so the natural way of skin is to just be as it is but it but if you know putting a sharp fine point of pressure and the movement will cause a cut right that's the jur so, <clears throat> so uh, uh, what the verse is referring to is that Allah knows all that you do beforehand <coughs> Abu Saud, Abu <coughs> and others have said that Allah knows what you do beforehand. He has prior knowledge of everything. From the ghayb, doesn't he? Isn't it? So he has prior knowledge of everything. He knows what you do. And even the sins, especially the sins, is focusing on. Because the sin is, in all reality, given that we're servants of God, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, um, we shouldn't sin. Right, you know, we should try to obey him as much, as much as we can. But people commit sins, human beings, right? Well, khairul khatain at tawabun, and the best of those who make frequent mistakes are those who repent frequently. Um, so, um, it's as though the sin goes against the natural way of a human being. So, Allahu alam, something to this effect. This effect. And and then so it's it's he he's saying that he knows all that you do, especially your sins, right? But then Saud says, why has he put it, um, put knowing your sins between, uh, saying he he takes back your souls at night and and then he wakes you up in the mornings or in the daytime is because he's saying that despite all of your sins and despite the sins that you commit that deserve punishment, even death right is which is a form of punishment despite all that he still allows you <coughs> allows you to um Allah uh sorry he mentions the uh, the night uh and he knows what you do in the day uh and then he wakes you up in in the day because he knows uh, all that you do and even though you know, we deserve a punishment for, for the sins that we commit. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, out of his generosity, still allows us uh, to wake up and live out the, our days, right? Thumma yabathu, you know, atarakhi rutbi, that even more, you know, uh, what's more significant <coughs> is despite knowing this, uh, he awakens you, he it brings you back to consciousness. Yabathukum. Ba'atha literally means to like send something off. Like there's an animal just stood there, you know, you you, you slap it on the buttocks and it will run off, right? So you you know, with vigor and you know and energy. So he gives you he wakes you in the day, in the daytime. Uh <clears throat> why? Liyukuda ajalum musamma. So uh, so a particular specific appointed term can be completed, meaning that the term of our lives, every single one of us has a lifespan and that's known to God. How many days, how many hours, how many minutes, seconds, even the number of breaths, when that's complete, it's time. So <clears throat> he does that. He does all of this for us, you know, um, and you know, even the sleeping at night, right? It's, it's a huge blessing for us. You know, you deprive your body of enough sleep and, you know, you can start getting psychoses, right? It's people just lose it. So, 
as we see the mu'amala, the, the, the dealing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has with his creation is, is one of mercy and kindness. So then he says, ثُمَّ إِلَيْهِ مَرْجِعُكُمْ Then, after, then, uh, not just then, but moreover, what's more, even more significant than all of this um, <clears throat> is, uh, or it could mean after a while, after a long while, uh, but more significantly, إِلَيْهِ uh, to him is your مَرْجِعْ from رُجُوعْ to, to return. So مَرْجِعْ means the ultimate, final, complete, perfect return right thumma ilayhi marji'ukum to him alone is your return and then thumma and even greater than that right yunabbi'ukum bima kuntum ta'malun he's gonna tell you with consequential a very consequential telling naba is consequential news so the what he tells you is, is important and you know it's gonna have an effect right uh for the rest of your existence He's gonna make uh, you know make you aware of, inform you of all that you used to do again and again, what you did habitually, what you did, you know, deliberately. All of these things, they're gonna be known. Meaning, after that, he's, he's gonna judge you, right? So it's it's a serious thing. So here we have proof, you know, of uh, the occurrence of the day of judgment because he, if you know the one who who can take your life, he can give you you know give you life a second time and we see this on a minor level you know with sleep and awakening so we're going to see it on a major level like he's promised um <clears throat> like that imagine so you know so you, there's people in <coughs> who have really deep sleep you can shake them and everything and they won't wake up right so allah subhanahu wa ta'ala i mean uh, practically what, what what would you say about someone in coma in a coma right who just can't be woken up so allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can do can do that easily so then he says وَهُوَ الْقَاهِرُ فَوْقَ عِبَادِهِ and we've looked at this you know, before but he says but he is he reigns supreme over all his creation he is the one who he is the supreme dominator over all his creation all of his servants everyone is a servant of God and now it's just a case of are you a willing servant of God or are you an unwilling servant of God the unwilling servants of God uh, rebellious servants and they're gonna have to deal with that rebellion and its consequences but the willing servants of God this can go to you know beautiful uh, extremes not extreme to, to, to a beautiful <coughs> extent where someone you know, like Sayyidina Ibrahim in salati wa nusuki wa mahyaya wa mamati lillahi rabbil alameen where he said my, my prayer and my <coughs> sacrifice and my life and my death ultimately they're all for Allah, the Lord of the worlds. So you can go to that degree. And so he says, الْقَاهِرُ فَوْقَ عِبَادِي Those who do, doesn't exist, non-existence, he dominates it through creating. Those who do exist, he dominates it through destroying them or causing corruption in, in them, like disease and illnesses. He is the one in charge. Uh, the day is dominated by the night, right? When the sun sets, the darkness comes. The night is dominated by the day, light is dominated by darkness, darkness is dominated by, you know, light. <clears throat> living beings are dominated by so many things, other living beings, inert things, you know. Uh, viruses, they're not, they're not even alive, but they can, you know, they can take a person, you know. Uh, some people are honoured and some people are humiliated and some people are given uh, kingdoms and some people's kingdoms are stripped away from them. All of this, you know. al qahiru, the one who dominates. Qahar um, is like complete force and, you know, uh, in the, in the, the Urdu version of it literally has this uh, connotation of, uh, you know, fear because of panic and stuff. But here it is Qahar and I suppose Arabic one would, would, would as well. But Al-Qahir, the one who dominates completely, right, he's just the supreme uh, God over all of his servants. And so he can do that, right? He can resurrect, he can reward, he can punish. وَيُرْسِلُ عَلَيْكُمْ حَفَظَةً And he sends alaykum over you, right? Uh, uh, scribes, you could say, recording angels. <clears throat> These are the kiramun katibin, the angels who are noble and who, who document all that we do. We do. They come, they see, they watch what we're doing. 
and <clears throat> they're a blessing from God because when a person realizes that um, I'm being watched not only by God but by his angels sometimes people can have a really good opinion of God which is a good thing on, on its own but you know, like some people can just be, be, become deluded. You know what? We're saved. You know, nothing's going to happen to me. Uh, I'll be fine in the Akhirah. And then they start doing wrong, uh, wrong things and harming others. So that's where the delusion, you know, can, can harm them. But then, so then the angels are there. So, you know, the angels are documenting everything. Everything is seen. Maybe I should, you know, watch what I do. Everything is seen, is documented. It's going to be pro provided as... Uh, proof you may forget all the things you've done i bet if someone asked you uh, think back you uh, know in, in the last 24 hours tell me about all of it or just you know make a mental note of all of the sins that you've committed most of us wouldn't be able to do it right so you know the angels come half of they come and they they guard they, they protect our deeds in, in the sense that everything has been written and they ensure that it's not just gone to waste it's preserved uh, and then there's Hatta, and this continues. So this Hatta has this meaning of Allah sends the angels and they watch what a person do, does and they record everything he does, all of his actions, deliberate, accidental, whether he's awake or asleep, you know, again and again and again and again, throughout all those nights and throughout all those days for the rest of his life until إِذَا جَاءَ أَحَدَكُمُ الْمَوْتُ when death comes to each of you, right? And when death comes to any of you, or each of you, you could say. <coughs> well, here each, uh, it's talking about everyone, but individually. Ahadakum has this, uh, any is, 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 is correct, but it has this connotation of um, specific, uh, of singling out an individual without being specific, right? Uh, and then Jaa, something tremendous. Death is tremendous. Death comes to you. You don't go to it, it comes to you. Right? When your times come, the angels come. And some of the ulama said that, you know, the angel of death comes to take your soul. Souls. He has deputies, they take out the soul. And when he gets to the throat, he takes it out from there. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best. But in reality, Allah is the one, you know, who, who gives life and takes life. Uh, they just fulfill a function, I know. So Allah has a system. And he honors them by giving them, them these roles. And also, you know, uh, no one can claim, you know, oh, the system's rigged. You know, impartiality, there are angels there who wrote everything down. So it's all written. So what happens? The word, who? Rasuluna, our messengers or our uh, our angels. But a Rasul is one who comes to deliver a message. And their, their message is what? Time's up. So they take uh, the souls. Tawafathu, they take him back fully, they take back his soul fully. Wahum la yufarritoon. And there's another qira'ah, wahum la yufarritoon. And so here, wahum la yufarritoon, they're never neglectful of this, or they're never, um, <clears throat> it, it would negate them ever being late, or, you know, be, uh, to be unmotivated. Uh, in fulfilling the task, no, they do it pro properly, on time, every time, perfectly. So there's no deficiency in the carrying out of this instruction. And then the other qira'ah, yufritun, and there's no excess either. <coughs> they don't come to a person before his, his term is up. Rather, exactly when he's meant to die, he's meant to die. So no one's taken too soon and no one's time you know was was cut short when you're meant to die the time you're allotted that's when it happened right Allah. and then so then he, he says Thumma ruddu ila Allahi mawlahumul haqqo ala lahul hukmu wa huwa asra'ul hasibin then they are returned to Allah their true master judgment is his alone and he is the swiftest reckoner what's interesting is once again thumma moreover more significant than them actually taking it that they all returned to allah the supreme absolutely perfect most majestic and powerful king to him they returned ruddu ilallahi mawlahumul haqq right and he's the Mawla, the one who, uh, who is in charge of all of their matters and all of their affairs. 
he is the one who they return to and so what's interesting let me just show you let's go back to the previous verse he says إِذَا جَاءَ أَحَدَ كُمُ الْمَوْتِ and really beautiful point Abu Saud and others mentioned that when one of, when death comes to one of you right, any of you death comes but then in the next verse he says they all ruddu they all returned to God all of them why because death comes on an individual basis right and if you look at all of humanity yes people can die in groups together but in general people die um, uh, there's no one fixed time for everyone's death but as for the resurrection it's the entire group all at once so in the previous verse when he comes t talks about death it's in a singular but here Ruddu he uses the plural right uh, to express everyone's gonna get resurrected at the same time really beautiful and then Ruddu passive that you know without any effort it's almost it's, it's effortless for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he wills and he makes it happen إِلَى اللَّهِ they return to Allah the Supreme King and then he says مَوْلَاهُمُ الْحَقِّ their Mawla their master who has uh, complete control over all of their affairs right all matters are in his hands and you know they're gonna return to their master who's gonna judge them and uh, reward those who are good and punish those who deserve punishment and then he says al haq the true uh, the one who's absolutely perfect and fair and he's a true lord you can read it like that or you can say maulahum and then his own name al haq so you know the the supreme the supreme supremely real right and you know the absolutely as i said before haq is connected to wisdom as well so the one who's absolutely fair and you know uh, allows no injustice then he says Allah listen up understand pay attention Allah lahu al hukum the decision is his judgment is his his is the hukum the judgment right he is in absolute control on that day all the time but everyone will see it on that day he is in absolute control and he is the swiftest of reckoners people who who assess and judge and then obviously reward and punish of, out of anyone who's ever done that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the swiftest and there are narrations um the mufassirun mentioned narration that everyone will be judged uh like everyone the judgment will be done for everyone by the in the time it takes to um milk a sheep <coughs> so he's not distracted by one person uh, you know from another he's absolutely perfect in what he does how he does it swiftest most accurate most uh, fair and just judgment right subhanahu ta'ala so talking about being just um here's the example of the mushrikeen who are not just right and you know they don't act fairly so he says Qul, say o messenger you know these people kept bringing objections so, okay here give them an objection man yunajikum i believe there's another qira'a yunjikum yunaji can be over stages or over a longer period of time and yunji is quicker and, and all at once قُلْ مَنْ يُنَجِّيكُمْ مِنْ ظُلُمَاتِ الْبَرِّ وَالْبَحْرِ تَدْعُونَهُ تَضَرُّعًا وَخُفْيَةً لَإِنْ أَنْجَانَا مِنْ هَذِهِ لَنَكُونَنَّ مِنَ الشَّاكِرِينَ Say, O Prophet, who rescues you from the darkest times on land and sea? He alone you call upon with humility openly and secretly. If you, saying, if you rescue us from this, we will be ever grateful. So, مَنْ يُنَجِّيكُمْ Who rescues you? Who takes you out of the calamities that you're in? And either immediately, like in one, you know, in one go, or over time, or spaced out, or in a tremendous way. They're both going to be great, but the second will be unity will be more significant. Um, <clears throat> uh, both are used uh, when when describing uh, the, um, the people of Musa escaping the water, and and then that water, you know, drowning uh, Pharaoh's people. From the darknesses of the land and sea. So 
the darkness of the land will be like there's there's two positions right so one position where where it, where it would be dark because it's night <coughs> and dark because there are clouds so there's no sunlight oh, sorry there's no moonlight yeah and the darkness of the sea would but you know it's dark night time at the sea and the winds are blowing really hard and there's a storm and you know it's like that um or the other position is that uh, the Arabs used to say, talk about a day of tremendous calamities and problems and what, you know, these sorts of things. They refer it to as Yawmun Mughlimun, a dark day, right? And we say that in English, right? You can say the dark day. Um, I mean, there's the uh, the historical uh, term of, you know, the Black Friday, you know. Um, so, you know, uh, this is what people use, right? Um, and uh, so the the darkness, is, I mean, the calamities that happen are in the land, and the calamities that happen to people in the sea, when you know the, the storms are raging, winds are, uh, are howling, and ships are getting tossed from pillar to post, and you know they could be capsized, they could capsize any minute and drown. Everyone could drown. In those situations, you know, it says, who rescues you in those situations? تَدْعُونَهُ تَضَرُّعًا وَخُفْيَةً You call on him with desperate despair, right? تَضَرُّع, as I said uh, recently, it's like <coughs> when you're absolutely desperate, you feel your need, you're expressing your absolute need, and you're asking تَضَرُّعًا uh, So this would be openly because you, the, the person will be out there pleading, begging, Oh Allah, please! Rescue me, save me, you know, and وَخُفْيَةً and secretly, right, someone inside, you know, calling on God like this, when the problems occur in their lives, people turn to God, oh my God, you know, what do they say, oh, you know, it's um, whether they admit it or not, so he says, you know, like, who is it that rescues you and saves you, you know, from these calamities, what do they say when they're desperate? لَإِنْ أَنْجَنَا مِنْ هَذِهِ They say, they say, they swear by God, we swear by God, if He rescues us from this, لَنَكُونَنَّ مِنَ الْشَاكِرِينَ We will certainly, truly, absolutely be of the people who are known for their being grateful, i.e. to God. They will really, really be characterized with, with gratitude to God for Him rescuing us. To the point that we're going to be known as, you know, one of the people who are famous for it, for being grateful. That's how grateful we're going to be. And, you know, obviously, they make that claim, but do they do it? That's different. So he says, قُلْ Say, O Messenger, قُلِ اللَّهُ يُنَجِّيكُمْ مِنْهَا Allah is the one who, who rescues you from them, the darknesses of the land and sea, or the calamities, calamities of the land and sea. وَمِنْ كُلِّ كَرْبِ And from all other distress so curve is literally it means for something to be flipped upside down you could say something that comes and knocks you out completely you know it's like your, your whole life's been turned upside down Allah is the one that saves them from these situations of distress and sorrow and from all other types of calamities thumma and then this thumma indicates shock like shockingly thumma antum tushrikun nominal sentence is <coughs> fixed <coughs> and changing meaning this is how they become and you know this is their default state then it becomes it's like they're permanently fixed in this state allah rescues them from these calamities and from every other difficulty and calamity then shockingly the opposite of what they should do they become mushrikun tushrikun thumma tushrikun they associate others in worship with allah they say others uh, uh, deserve worship because others intercede for us, others, others, others. So are the idols, right? And so here's the problem. Here's the problem. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ta ta to protect us and to truly make us of you know, those who are, you know, famous for their gratitude to Him. Uh, wa sallallahu ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. Walhamdulillahi rabbil alam.